I previously had a SaaS tool, a software company that basically built tools to help small business owners grow their social media. And um, what I realized was I got really disenchanted with social media. And I, and I just felt, you know, I think definitely approximately like seven or eight years ago, I already saw the highly polarizing um, reactions that were happening between groups of people. And that was a moment where I felt, okay, you know, this doesn't seem like something that is really helpful or really value adding. It seems like the beginning of echo chambers. And of course, we all see that now today. It's very easy to see that right now. And so, I, and that's kind of started my journey kind of going away from that. And what I really, really realized was that a lot of the experiences that we have online aren't very human centric. Like they're not mapped to how humans experience things. So I'll give you a good example. Like, Talking with the Experts. Hello and welcome to Talking with the Experts. My name is Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com. And Talking with the Experts is about all things business, by business owners, for business owners. And you can find it on all good podcasting, streaming platforms and on YouTube. And today I'm going to be talking about virtual event engagement with my guest, Hoi Yin Chung from Hong Kong. And Hoi Yin is an entrepreneurial visionary with a knack for being ahead of the curve, Uh, accurately predicting the social and psychological harms associated with social media. He moved on from his successful social media agency to pursue the future of humanised digital interactions. He went on to pioneer technology and groundbreaking concepts in remote work and real-time virtual collaboration. In just over a year, Hoi Yin has grown Remo from five to over 100 members, all working globally. He is currently passionate about creating authentic conversations that drive meaningful relationships in the most human way possible with the help of technology. Welcome, Ho Yin, and uh, thank you for joining me. No, thank you. Thank you so much, Rose. I'm super excited. Great. Now, why did you call your business name Remo? Why did I call it? Um, well, uh, we were brainstorming. Uh, originally, we were designing a platform that was for virtual offices, uh, a platform that helps fully remote teams to kind of connect um, and work together and be productive. So we were trying to shorten the word from remote to Remo. And then I saw, <laughs> that, I saw that the domain name for Remo.co was like, like really cheap. And I said, how often am I going to get a four-letter domain name? Uh, I better buy it right now. So I bought it. And then that's how I landed with, with the name. Yeah, no, it, it made sense. Once you said it was a, a virtual thing and remote just clicked in my brain, I thought, yeah, short for remote. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. yeah that's, that's a good concept, actually. Yeah, it's, it's very clever. So you um, are going to explain to us how to create engaging and highly interactive events that triple the leads and revenues of business owners. So the floor is yours. Yeah, sure. I mean, um, the way how I kind of explain to people like what, what is my sort of um, concept and, and the way how, as you say, part of my background was um, I previously had a SaaS tool, a software company that basically built tools to help small business owners grow their social media. And um, what I realized was I got really disenchanted with social media. And I, and I just felt, you know, I think definitely approximately like seven or eight years ago, I already saw the highly polarizing um, reactions that were happening between groups of people. 
And that was a moment where I felt, okay, you know, this doesn't seem like something that is really helpful or really value adding. It seems like the beginning of echo chambers. And of course, we all see that now today. It's very easy to see that right now. And so, I, and that's kind of started my journey kind of going away from that. And what I really, really realized was that a lot of the experiences that we have online aren't very human centric. Like they're not mapped to how humans experience things. So I'll give you a good example. Like Facebook is a platform where you chat or with people or you try to meet with people with text first. People that you don't know. You go into a Facebook group and you just chat text with people. Imagine if you went to your local club or country club or some you know bar and all you could do was text chat with the person next to you. You couldn't look at them, you couldn't see them. And that's how you had a conversation. And you'd be like, that sounds ridiculously stupid. Like I go to a bar, I look at people, shake my hand. I wanna get to know people. But that's basically what Facebook and LinkedIn and all these social media platforms are. Like they limit your interaction through the mode of textual communication. And for me, I felt that doesn't sound human. And so when I really thought about how do you create an experience this human, that's not how we created Remo, and um, and I can I can I can share my screen to kind of like. I don't know, would you like me to share my screen? Rose? It would be lovely. Thank you. Okay, let me just do that right now. So okay, here's my. So so then we created something where like, how does it? What does it mean to be human? And what 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 it means to be human is to have the ability to just have conversations with people in a very authentic way. So how do you create self-authentic conversations? And conversations are really in these like small groups, right? You, right now, Zoom and all these other platforms, they're very one-to-many, right? Zoom was originally created to, you know, it's called video conferencing. Video conferencing came from the word phone call conferencing, like call conference, right? Which is all calls. You do calls because you want to have a meeting, right? You know, you may hang out and then you, you and I, maybe we might call someone just to hang out and talk for hours. But even if we did do that, it's usually one-on-one, -on -one, right? You wouldn't have like 10 people on a call and just like hang out for like two hours. But, but we do that in meetings because why? Only one person speaks at a time. You can't have two people talking at a time, right? It just doesn't work. So Zoom was really built for meetings, but not really built for casual conversation and events. And so I wanted to create something that really mimicked that kind of um, experience. Because at the end of the day, how do we map the human behavior properly so that it seems natural to have these online um, connections seem more natural? And so engagement for virtual events really hinges on your ability to create these experiential events that are engaging and a lot of back and forth. So a typical virtual event is like one to many. Like I'm talking, it's like it's like an auditorium when you were back in school, in college. Like you, you listen to the professor just talking at you, right? That's how most events are like today, which is great. There's no problem with that. Um, but for me, that's great for certain cases, but at the end of the day, I wanna feel engaged. And the only way to be engaged is to have peer-to-peer -peer communication. And the way to do that is to do that by breaking it up and having tables. And so that's what we've created. Each grouping of tables is a conversation. And I can turn on my mic and cam um, and very easily um, talk to the people on that table. So. When there's other people on this table, there will be cameras, video streams, you know, right across here. And that gives me the ability to just talk to the people. It's like a private little breakout room in some sense. That's but the difference like, is that... A bit like Zoom's uh, breakout rooms. Is it similar to that? Yeah, Zoom has a version of the breakout room. Um, but what we do is you now have the ability to move wherever you want. Right? And that's the magic because... If you're always restricted to going to a certain place and you don't have that freedom, mm. that's not human as well, right? That's not human at all. 
And also, Zoom breakout rooms doesn't allow you to have a custom floor plan that immerses your no. guests. No, it doesn't. No. I'll give you a you really good example. Up, you why can't get up and leave the room and then come back into it either. Once you leave, you're gone. Yeah. You can't get back in. Yeah. I'll give you a really good example. If, if me and you and a bunch of other people we invited and we came into a room, we we're having drinks and it was all white, bland, nothing. Would you feel that the conversations there would be better or worse than we went into a room that had magazines, nice chairs, swanky, you know, a, the experience, like a place that looks nice, like a lobby of a hotel. I'd rather sit down and Which have one? a conversation with someone where yeah. it looks nice and, and it's aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Exactly. Which would you rather do in real life? I think everyone would say, yeah, oh, yeah, I would love to, like, sit at a nice boutique hotel, lobby lounge, and, like, lounge and, you know, hang out. And so that's the comparison. Like, it's events are immersive. Human connections are immersive. Like, you can't just have, like, like, like a Zoom. Well, you can. Some people do do that, and there's no, there's no problem with that. But engagement depends on the context, mm. and that's what we're driving towards. You can't encourage engagement if – you don't set the context right. And so that's what we do. That is what Remo does extremely, extremely well. We're the number one networking platform uh, for virtual events um, in, in the whole, uh, uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the world right now. And so this platform now um, allows us to do many different things. And, and so like we've had people do speed networking, pitch nights. Um, people have done baby showers. People have done weddings. People have done all sorts of types of events because it's so flexible and it allows these small conversations to happen. Hmm, that's really interesting. Um, so I guess the next step is how does one get their hands on such a, a platform? Yeah, so um, we have, uh, uh, you can absolutely, uh, oops, let me just go here. Uh, let me just go to repo.co here. And yeah, so you can go to Humans Online Experience and that's where you, um, you can go to uh, check it out and you can go to pricing mm -hmm. um, and look at our pricing. We are changing our pricing tomorrow, actually. So um, you can come here and take a look and um, go and start a free trial. It's free. Uh, we will have a free plan that's actually releasing tomorrow. And, um, and under that free plan, you will be able to um, have up to 50 guests per month on your plan forever. Unlimited. That's a good, that's a good deal. And, um, and so you can try and test it for yourself unlimited. And when you have more than 50 guests, you want to host more events, then you um, let us know. And then we can um, we'll give you more, uh, uh, more, uh, a, a much more better planet suited to your needs. Yeah, no, it sounds good. So what's included in the free plane? How are you? So the free plan includes um, you can have a, a few, uh, you can have um, unlimited registrations, but fifty guests that actually come in. Um, you can have up to ten people uh, inside to do a webinar. So our platform can do a conversation mode, which is the networking, and you can also press a button and turn on the webinar mode. So it looks similar to kind of Zoom webinars where you have one person speaking and a chat box on the right. We have up to ten people talking at the same time. We have um, a lot of uh, uh, emoji features. We have a view where you can look at the audience actually uh, and get and see the audience feedback, which is actually one of our most um, popular uh, features. And, um, uh, and we have lobby features able to shuffle your, 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 your delegates, your guests, so they can network with each other. Um, and yeah, and, 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 and more. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds really, really interesting. I think it's going to um, actually take off uh, compared to Zoom. I mean, Zoom's a, you know, a good platform on its own, but they do need some competition, I think, and I think your things come around at a timely uh, timely time. <laughs> it's such a phrase as a timely time um, because, yeah, the world has, has had to go virtual and um, I think hybrid and virtual events are going to be you know, the norm in moving forward in the world. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a great opportunity for people to get in on the ground floor, so to speak. So, yeah. yeah thank um, you. I yeah, guess, absolutely. So how, I guess, um, you know, 
I pro you, you've explained the pricing, so that's really great. But how does it compare to other, like, um, conferencing-type um, programs and applications? Yeah, so, you know, we are in the virtual events business. Um, and so it, we really do help people create virtual events or continuous engagement. So our pricing is around about average price, uh, maybe a, a, a tad a bit more expensive. But that's because our customer service is essentially um, basically top of, of the industry. Like our uh, customer ratings are, are basically 4.6, 4.7 out of 5. Um, we provide very, very, our, one of our strengths is our customer service. We support you the whole way. We will get on calls with you. We will onboard with you. We will be there at the event with you. We will support that event. Um, we, will, we want to make sure that you create a great event. And that is one of our main value props. So you're not just paying for just the software, you're paying for not just the software, but a team to help you. Um, because we know how stressful can it be to organize events and we will co we'll continue to educate and teach you how to be successful. Yeah, wow, that's, um, that's amazing. I think a lot of people here in Australia would love this sort of platform that people are doing webinars and um, networking events would be really great. Are you uh, taking on affiliates? Yes, we are. We are taking on affiliates. We do have um, an affiliate program. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we should talk more, Rose. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's a great opportunity for people here that are, are speakers and uh, event organisers. I think it's um, something other than Zoom because I think people are getting a bit Zoomed out um, because it's, it is limited in what it can do. Thank you, Zoom, for your uh, for what you do and being able to use the platform. But I think, yeah, I think more players in the marketplace will bring um, everyone's price prices down and uh, become more affordable. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, virtual events allows people to create events that a lot of people would not may not have attended anyways mm. because they have families, they have scheduling conflicts, maybe they can't commit so much time. So what you're doing is you're scaling your event out to a much broader audience instead of just people who said, yes, they'll go. But now you've got people that can come that, um, I'll, I'll give you a great example. What happens if someone wants to come only for 15 minutes, meet some people and leave? But traditional events, it's either you're going or you're not, right? And that means that you can only catered to a very small group of people that are fully committed and want to attend the whole thing. But there are a bunch of people that may not want to. Maybe they want to attend the beginning and attend the end. With this, you're, you're right now it's very, very, very broad and leads to more exposure, more leads, more results, um, and better uh, ROI for your business. Yeah, great stuff. Great stuff. Um, I do have a question in mind then, and now I've, got, I've lost. I was too intent in listening to what you've got to offer. <laughs> I think it's a great concept. Um, 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 you mentioned something about uh, people um, not staying long. They wanted to come in and out. Uh, oh, yes, does it integrate with other things like Eventbrite or um, any other of those sorts of um, you know, like MailChimp or yes. MailerLite or any of those yes. other sort of platforms? We do. Yes, we do. Absolutely. We do. We do. We do. Um, and with them, you can use them, uh, both Eventbrite uh, with, with uh, uh, a Zapier Connect. Um, yeah. And so, yes, we do. Oh, be that's beautiful. Yay. I'm, I'm in. I'm in like Flynn. Don't you worry. <laughs> 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 absolutely absolutely so where tell me again where your website is um how you it's at remo.co so it's r-e-m-o dot c-o mm -hmm. and where else can they find um information about you know how it works and you know get a demo um there's a there's a there's a booking uh, uh tr tr Sign up a trial. Um, you can sign up a trial on Remo.co. It's right on the front page. Um, that's the easiest way to tr tr check it out. Another way is to go for a group demo. So we have a group demo on the top of the website. There's a section where you can just say, I want a demo. And then you can attend like a class and then people will, you can, you can, you can network with others. You can uh, get the demo and, and um, get that full experience. Terrific. Wow. 
Anything else you want to explain to me about this great new application? It sounds terrific. Um, I think uh, one of the things that it's what what we see right now, you know, as um, is what's really most important these days that we're finding that um, leads to much better uh, increase in other leads or uh, when it comes to teaching or it comes to retention of knowledge with people is you need to increase the amount of actual human to human engagement. So when you're creating something and someone's just listening, right? That's a very passive sort of activity. When you're doing something that's passive, someone's going to be like, oh, I'm going to go look at my email. I'm going to go do something else. But the difference with what Remo does is you can't be passive. You have to sit there and you have to interact with someone. You have to answer their question or else from a social standpoint, we'll be rude. And so that's why our engagement rates are through the roof. When, when you have 100 people there, engagement is over 95%. Like people are talking to each other and they turn their mic and camera on. And that's the key difference because other platforms, engagement can be as low as like 40, 30% because they're passive. They're just not really paying attention. They're looking at their phone. They're, you know, they're trying to figure out what to do with their dog that's shouting in the background. Like there's something else going on and doesn't, and it's very difficult for you to focus. Um, and so that it's learning through action and learning through engagement. That'd be really great for uh, classrooms, schools, that sort of thing, do you think or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do have universities. We have uh, several. Um, so higher education universities is actually uh, a pretty reasonably sized segment for us. And um, we do have a lot of people using it for that. Absolutely. Yeah, it sounds like it would be a, a real benefit to remote learning. Especially when Absolutely. everyone's in, Absolutely. Especially when everyone here, or not everyone here, but most people here are in lockdown in Australia and kids can't go to school. So I think it would be a lot, uh, be a useful tool for um, even primary schools here. So yeah, it'd be great. That's fantastic. Well, thank you. Mm. Thank you so much. It'd be great. All right. Well, I've enjoyed our conversation and I, I told you that I'd learned something. <laughs> 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 well, right. thank, thank you, you so for much coming. for having me. Ah, thank you for coming thank on. You for me. Thanks, Ayin. Great. Talk soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Talking with the experts.